Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about writing tests. And this is inspired by a friend of mine, Nunu Maduro, who posted a Twitter poll just yesterday with 1,100 votes, which is pretty significant statistically. And the topic was why people don't write tests. And 50% don't have time for that. And people like Nunu who are proponent of writing tests and then write tests themselves and then they release tools for that. Nunu recently released Best PHP, which is a pretty awesome tool for testing. Those people don't understand the other people who don't write tests and why do they not do that. So in this video, I want to explain to those two different groups of people because I'm kind of in between. I do write tests sometimes in my team, but not always. And lack of time is number one reason. So I want to explain for those people who don't write tests why it is useful and why you should at least try. And for those people who are writing tests religiously, I want to explain the side of why people don't write tests often. And first, let's quickly talk about lack of knowledge, which is also a significant group of people. So 37% don't know how to write tests or how to write them efficiently. So I have two courses that I can recommend. One of them is my own, so for starting PHP unit testing in Laravel for beginners, so you can click on that, the link is on the screen. Or the course that I originally learned from is from Adam Wadham, Test Driven Laravel. It may be a little outdated in terms of Laravel version, but the thoughts about how to think about testing, it's really, really awesome. And also there's a lot of information on Laracasts, courses, and demo projects with TDD, so you can check out that as well. So three sources in total, how to to start writing tests. And now let's talk about lack of time for testing. So people who are writing tests religiously, the logic there is if you write tests, your test suite will protect you in the future from a future bug. Actually not even protect you, but show you that something is broken. When the whole system or crucial parts of the system are tested automatically, you can feel pretty safely to refactor the code to change significant features. Because if you change something and you run the test and something will fail, it will be your tests that will show you the bug, not the user. So the process is you get to green state, so test succeeding on the version 1 of your feature of your project, then you create something new and you get to version 2, which is failing in the beginning, failing the tests, and then you change the code to make it work and also maybe change the tests along the way. And that is how you write sustainable, long-term, maintainable software in any language. It's not about Laravel or PHP or any tool. Automated tests just help you sleep better. That's the whole goal, holy grail, and all of that religion about testing. But that religion, I call it religion actually, that thought, that train of thought is based on one assumption, that developers have time and budget for that. It's kind of assuming that the project is already long term, so we need to write tests to make it solid from the very beginning, which is not the case for a lot of people who are in the other group who don't have time for tests. And let's take a look at that scenario and I will try to explain. There are actually two sub-scenarios. First scenario is low budget. Just you have to deliver something for 500 bucks in a few weeks and the client cares more about how to deliver cheaply than how to deliver sustainably and for the future. So developers then are thinking how to deliver something at all on time and on budget instead of doing something long term or scalable or something like that. They just test things manually. They are pretty much okay if something breaks. Like 90% of the code will work, 10% will break, but that's no big deal because the budget is low. And if in such scenario people start writing tests, they won't deliver the project and they won't get the money. And the client will be unhappy. And it doesn't matter if you convince them that you are creating solid ground for the future. There's no future now. So that is the first sub-story, low budget. And then second sub-story is lack of clarity on the future. So it's pretty typical, especially in these days of Agile and MVP and speed to market, first version of software is usually for the testing of the market. The software itself is not stable. Client needs to launch something to test the market if something will get traction, if their clients or customers or visitors get interested at all in the project. And usually, again, it's a small budget. It may be a bit bigger, like thousand or a couple thousand dollars. But the goal is not to deliver sustainable software. The goal is to test something quickly. Deliver MVP version one, whatever you call it, alpha maybe, and test with the first group 
first marketing campaign, first launch on some product hunt or hacker news or whatever. And the goal is to see if that project will fly at all. Will it launch? Will it be successful? And if it is successful, then the client is happy to invest more money in the software quality or they raise some funding, some external money. And then there is a question about tests. So first we deliver the MVP quickly and we don't care that much about edge cases or quality of 100% test coverage. And then when you do get bigger money, then you're at the crossroad. Then probably you have more time to deliver that version 2 or version 1.1 and a bit bigger budget. So as soon as the scope of the project and all the cases are pretty clear, then it's time to think about testing. At least in my experience, that version 1, that alpha, that MVP has often different scope from the reality because that first launched version tells the customer that something is different, that expectations on the market are different, that functions should work in a different way, that some functions are needed, which he didn't thought about before. So a lot of changes are happening, like fundamental changes, like not only how features work, but what features are included and how they should work together. So you can call it re-architecture of the whole system. So as soon as that solid architecture becomes more solid from the project scope point of view, from the description of the project, then in my opinion, it's time to invest in solid testing for the solid foundation for a sustainable future. So I think that is the middle ground when your project starts growing and when there's a feeling that it will be a software for years ahead, not for months or weeks. So then it becomes a question how to convince the client that they should probably spend more budget or more time on testing the foundation. And I encourage you to read some replies to this tweet of Nunu, particularly Sebastian Schlein and one of his tweets, and I've read his thoughts on the same topic recently, even before, that tests should be inside of your price. You don't specifically charge for tests because you don't specifically charge for using PHP Storm. Or as Sebastian said in the tweet, you don't list using Git and Composer in your quote, right? So if you are working on at least a little more serious software and you want to make your sleep better, this is the way how to communicate to client budget probably then becomes a bit bigger. And then if the client doesn't want to pay that, then probably it is the wrong client. And that's a totally different story, different topic on how to get clients with bigger budgets and better understanding why you need testing. But one way of thinking is to include tests in your process by default, include in the price or in hourly rate and just do them by default. If you don't write them now, you can start very small. And that's another tweet by Sebastian. So this is the message. Sometimes five tests are enough to make sure the core of your app works. And I really like that thought that you need to start testing the fundamentals of your app, the most crucial parts. I really like the thought from Matt Stauffer. At one of the conferences, he said, like, you have to test the parts, those parts of your application, that if they break, you would lose your job. So that's number one target for testing. And that could be enough, like the most crucial, the most risky, the most important parts of your application. So if you start even then, even if it's 5% test coverage, it's good. And then it all depends on your application, on your budget timeline and all of that. So these are my thoughts about whether you should or should not write tests. There are totally a lot of scenarios where tests would actually harm your project because you need to deliver quickly and on lower budget. But if you feel that you and your team will work on the same project for years, then in my opinion, at least some test coverage is really, really useful for yourself. What do you think? Let's discuss in the comment. Also in the description, I will link to a few more videos on the testing that I've done recently and also read all the replies to that tweet. It's also a really good discussion. Final note for those of you subscribers to my YouTube channel, and if you aren't, why? <laughs> So for those of you who saw my video yesterday about my new upcoming course about Laravel APIs, I asked you what you want to know and shoot in the comment any questions. And I'm overwhelmed about the amount of questions, suggestions, what to include in that course. Huge amount of comments and thanks for that. But I realized one thing. I wanted to shoot a course about Laravel APIs specifically, but majority of the questions and suggestions are about how to consume the API how to mix it all together in Vue.js or whatever front end, how to use sessions, tokens, and all of that. And that full stack projects wasn't actually the idea of the course. So probably what I will do this time, I will finish the course for Laravel API specifically for only backend with only some front end mentioned. 
And then I will probably shoot a separate course about creating full stack project with UGS included with more focus on the front end and the full stack. And for now, that's it. See you guys in other videos.